So my next guest on the Elsa Rob podcast is one of my favorite people. She's the ex Real Housewives of Cheshire star, an amazing charity ambassador. She's an Elsa Rob customer and one of my very good friends. It's Leanne Brown. Hello. Hi, Leanne. <laughs> you got it out in the end. Eventually, yeah. eventually. I always hate doing these intros because, like, we're really good friends. I know you, but it's like, how do we introduce to the audience? You forgot um, about the journal. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, we did well, we can, we can bring that up, yeah. actually. So, um, where to begin? So, I first met you, Leanne, was when you came on my retreat. That's right. Um, about five years ago now. And it's lovely because it's come full circle because now you are a retreat owner too. I know. And we'll we'll get to that, how you've come to this point in your life. But when I first met you... Um, you were on Real Housewives of Cheshire. You were one of the most popular characters. Um, you kind of had a different style about you. I mean, there was a lot of backstabbing and bitching on that show, but you always seemed to be a little bit nicer than the rest of the group. And I remember once a friend, a mutual friend of ours um, said to me, oh, I know Leanne who's on that show, really nice girl, her. And I was like, yeah, I met her at my retreat. Actually, she is a really nice girl. And it never really came across how lovely you actually were on screen. And I think ultimately that is kind of like, you didn't really fit in in that show. Yeah, um, story of my life. <laughs> yeah. And I think you were almost trying to be somebody that you weren't yeah. to keep up appearances. Would you say that's a fair representation? Absolutely. Yeah. Very lost in the world of the the bubble the footballer's wife football, I suppose. And obviously we know that the show is was an exploitation of, of women, wealthy women, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, and obviously when they put it to you, it's like, oh, it's really inspirational because of like you're doing things for yourself. And I'd actually just started doing the Kiss Frogs, which is a little clothing yeah. range that I'd um, embarked on because I wanted to do something for me. And when um, it came along, I was like, well, this is a great opportunity to promote it. But those that were close to me was like, don't be going on that show. Have you seen the American ones? It's awful. And I was like, well, I'll just be myself. Yeah. Like they can't twist it if I'm just myself. Oh, <laughs> how wrong was I? <laughs> yeah. Well, we're both, we've both been on scripted reality shows. Yeah. I did a show when I was a lot young called Desperate Scouse Wives. You were. And I know exactly how scripted it was. In fact, I printed the scripts. Yeah. So, so <laughs> ours wasn't scripted like that. It was, it was more of, um, They'd give us, they'd put us in situations and they'd obviously get us, before the show started, they'd get an insight into who you got on with or the what you thought of the different cast members and then they would just play on that. So they'd put you in different scenarios and they'd just make you stir it all up. So normally in real life, you wouldn't go around to eight friends and tell them the same story and, you know, yeah. then, then have that, that friend coming into like... And, the, be, and say, well, what have you been saying about me? Yeah, and bring it up and yeah. then make it really awkward. You're making a show at the end of the day. Yeah, of and there's an element of that. And you know that obviously people love the drama, but um, it it got really toxic. And for me personally, because obviously behind the scenes, there was a, a real um, breakdown of friendship and trust that went on, but nobody really seen the extent of that on camera. Um and that's why in the end, I just got all too much for me. I just, I just couldn't continue. And like you say, you know, it wasn't really me. Like I, I hated the confrontation. I give as good as I got. Like yeah. I've got a fiery side to me, haven't we all? But, yeah. And it was like, I remember the first series when all that happened with um, Magali actually, and, and they got me in the toilets. And because when it first started, I was just being me and this yeah. is a, they pulled me in the toilets and it was like you're just being you're a bit girl next door and we're just not really sure where to go with you and you're almost like threatening me and like yeah, if you carry yeah. on you know we might have to get rid of you yeah. because there's no story like yeah. you're not giving enough like spice yeah and then I had a big row within the toilet so they subconsciously they yeah. planted that seed and I'm like well I've got to give it um but yeah and that just sort of uh, came from nowhere but um yeah like I say I've got a fiery side and and I sort of had to show it at times. Otherwise I would have got walked all over even more. <laughs> Do you regret leaving the show when you did? No, I think it was the right time. Yeah. I, I, I probably could have left before that anyways. Really? Um, but yeah, I think um, different cast members had said, 
like every single series, I'm leaving, I'm leaving, and then came back to the next one. When I said I was leaving, I meant it. Yeah. Um, and did you see the reunion on the last one? I was literally throwing things. <laughs> no, I didn't. Honestly, I'll be honest, it's so toxic and I just sometimes can't like bear watching people argue on TV. I just think it's just what's the point? I Do you know. know what I mean? It's in, insane. So I just don't even, I don't even watch it no. now. And the thing is, the the there's so many, the, the light-hearted stuff and the fun stuff that is entertaining, yeah. as entertaining as arguing. Yeah. When people are laughing, it's like the monsters in Kinnit yeah. screaming, going and making the kids scream. That's the energy yeah, that they're holding. Yeah. But actually in the end, when they have the energy that's making them laugh is, is actually more powerful. And it, it's like the world is, isn't it? It's we project fear, project like low vibrational stuff and keep people in that vibration when actually... You know, I've, for me, it's much more entertaining to see someone laugh than it is to cry. Yeah, of course it is. Yeah. But yeah, drama seems to sell, arguments seem to yeah. sell, and it's just getting worse and worse. And we're on this slippery slope where it's getting more, it has to get more and more dramatic every season. Yeah. And they're putting in more and more fireworks to try and make that happen. I don't want to. Well, neither do I. <laughs> but unfortunately, these are people's real lives that you're talking about. And mm. then you're up for public consumption. I mean, how did you find that kind of being under a microscope and having your private life spoken about. Yeah, was, uh, yeah, still still is being spoke about quite widely, I've, I've just seen. Um, it was tough. It was tough because, I mean, obviously with Wes playing football and stuff, it, it, he was in the limelight more than me. And um, when obviously doing the show, that's it sort of hit me like a ton of bricks because I just felt like I was being myself on the show. And when I started getting people pulling my face apart and you know I, I look old and I, I've got a crooked mouth and all sorts of things and then obviously um sabotaging your character um I had to grow quick quick uh, a thick skin really quickly yeah and um you know I just had to take myself out from a perspective and looking in and thinking these people are being they're obviously joining in with the toxicity really course, aren't they but yeah. that's because of whatever's going on in them is well we are what we see and yeah. like whatever we we project it's what's going on internally isn't it so yeah. if they're sat at home being a keyboard warrior slagging everyone off when they know nothing really about anyone's in like what is actually going on in their lives it's yeah. just what they see on the screen but that's like the world now, isn't it? Society, the yeah, social media, you know, you, you you see something and you paint a picture and a story of somebody's life without actually really knowing anything about what's going on yeah, in their lives. Yeah, you see the 1%, which is usually the highlights or usually the best bits and not going to show you most vulnerable parts. But yeah. And you can filter a lot of it out. But when you're on screen, in HD, in 4K, in a two-dimensional screen in someone's yeah. living room, of course, one, you look different. Two, everything's amplified. And three, people think they have got a right to comment on everything yeah. because you've put yourself up for public consumption. So that's it, yeah. That's, that's the nature of the beast, isn't it? Would you say that any positives came out of that? The show? The show? Yeah. Oh, my God, absolutely. I learned so much about myself. I learned, um, still now I'm sort of peeling back the layers, finding my authentic self. And that yeah. was the beginning of it really, because all through my life, I feel like I have been, I've sort of latched on to strong characters. Um, and I think it stems a lot from my dad leaving and that yeah. abandonment issues and, and wanting sort of to be looked after. And obviously that's why I think I got into that abusive relationship when I was 18. And uh, and even like friendships at school, I was always um, had friends that were really strong characters and I was always sort of in the background, but I wanted to be seen so badly. Of course, and a bit like Dawn was a very strong character. Exactly, and yeah, yeah, I can see that now, yeah. yeah. And um, so I sort of, I kept myself small. Yeah. Um, and I was, even though, uh, well, for a long time, I was sort of frightened to sort of speak my truth. And yeah. that was sort of the beginning of me standing up for myself, if you will, and realizing those that were around me were actually actual real friends because obviously it came to a pivotal point on the show where, because I couldn't continue because of what was going on outside the show and I had to leave. Um, yeah. And that just really made me stand up and, and speak my truth. Yeah. I think it gave you a lot of strength, that show, actually. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I mean, 
to go back to what I said at the beginning. So in the last five years, I've seen a massive 180 change in you. I mean, you've gone from a quote unquote wag, a Man United wag to now, I mean, you're not even in a relationship with Wes anymore. No. Um, you were living in an unbelievable like mansion in Cheshire and now your life has changed. Um, but the one thing that has stuck with me all through everything is, yeah, you are not the person I've ever seen on screen. You aren't this like caricature wag. There's a lot more depth to you. You're one of the most fantastic mothers I have ever met. I've met all your three children many, many times and they're an absolute credit to you. Like we did the Great Wall of China with Hallie. Mm. She's unbelievable, young. They're so polite. And what always strikes me is like, you get a lot of kids who've been brought up in extreme wealth and they can be really like spoiled and bratty. And your kids are nothing like that. They're absolutely worlds apart. They're so loving and humble. Yeah. And that's a real credit to you. And I think that's a side that nobody sees. Yeah. Apart from your very close friends. Yeah. I mean, if you ask my kids, they might disagree with you about that when <laughs> I was screaming at, screaming at them to pick the stuff up. Um, yeah, it's, um, I'm so proud of them. And then like the, 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 the young ladies that they're turning out to be, obviously Hallie obviously being a bit older and, and seeing her now and she's been a real rock for me yeah. um, going through this transitional phase in my life. You know, obviously me and we're separating and um, we are really good friends, which is is so important to me and to the girls to, yeah. to, for them to see that, you know, you separate from someone, you don't have to be at each other's throats. That's not, doesn't have to be like that. Although it's been really difficult, um, just to just to go through that process in itself, um, even though I was the one to leave, um, it's just such a massive change. 25 years is a long time. And the one thing that's it's really been most difficult for me is, is not waking up with my girls every day. You know, yeah. I'm living in a separate house and, you know, they're, they're with their dad or they're with me. And, you mm. know, it, it, it's don't want to make rules. It's not yeah. like you've got to stay at your dad's, you've got to stay at mine. I'm, uh, they're old enough to sort of make a decision. Yeah. And, and sometimes I think, oh, well, I'll say you're coming to mine. Like, no, I'm staying here. And it's it's wounding for yeah. me, you know, because to not have them there 24-7. Yeah. But also they are teenagers and they're going through that tr transitional stage. And I think because Hallie was so different to them. Yeah. Um, she had like a few months where she just went in a room when she came on from school and she was... Um, going through that teenager phase but the other two are well Lily is like she's been homeschooled for the last couple of years and she's doing a GCSEs um online like she's been doing a tutoring yeah. um and so she just she's quite lazy really Lily she likes being at home and she she doesn't like um yeah she's quite not withdrawn, but she, you know, what she I mean? just she's likes so, her own company. She's very much likes her own company, yeah. and um, she's got like only got a few friends that yeah. she likes to hang out with. But we were actually in Italy. Me and Lilia went to Italy for her sixteenth birthday, and this is the kind of person she is. She looked at a house on the top of a hill, and she said. I wish I could live there. Like, Clitch was nowhere else around. She's like, I hate people. Oh, she's a bit of an introvert. No, she doesn't want babies. No. Like, no, she's just, yeah, definitely. Whereas Lola, oh gosh, she's one of the force to be reckoned with already. She's 12. She's at school. She's gone to secondary. And um, she's probably the most like me, rebel, I think, <laughs> when I was younger. So she's going to be one that's the most difficult one. But yeah, they are grounded still, even though everything that's happened... And um, I'm really proud of them all, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, and, and again, like that is a credit to you because that's been a transition, not only for you, you, you know, your life has completely changed, but so has their life. And they've just like, they just got on with it. Kids are resilient and mm -hmm. you are resilient too. And it's uh, it's been a joy to see, I really, I know like you always say you've got imposter syndrome and things like that. And we can talk about that and why maybe you feel a bit like that and what you're doing these days. But yeah, I've always thought you've got a lot more about you. And that's ultimately why uh, we collaborated on a project together. Yeah. So we did a journal together called Girl Got Grit. Yeah. And it was a great project. And I think that really helped you step outside of your comfort zone and realise, no, you have got a lot of fans. People do buy into what you say. Yeah. You can do this, you know, to actually sit and write a book 
and like get it manufactured and get it on sale yeah. and do all these things. It'll help from you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't do much, to be honest. I just put these things, ideas in front of Evie and you took it and went, we ran with it. You were a really great um, influence on me, like coming into my life when you did. They say the universe sends you people at the right time, don't they? Same with Jess, you know, yeah. um, Definitely. And and it funnily, you, Jess and Sophie, you're working yeah, with yeah. now, all went to the same school. Exactly. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Well, we're we, very like, uh, we, me and Jess did the podcast and we were chatting about this and um, it, it was an all girls school and yeah, a lot, it was in Blackburn, which is a very industrial town. A lot of entrepreneurship there. And, you know, if our parents weren't entrepreneurs, at least they, they would probably be comfortable enough that your kids would be okay if they pushed the boundary. And I feel like that's what I kind of was, do you know what I mean? Like I was, I had a comfortable upbringing, by no means spoiled in any way, but I had a nice comfortable upbringing, but I'm able to do what I do and I can be as ballsy as I am because I, I know that, you know, I have, I've got a bit of level of comfort there. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think, you can push yourself. And I think that's what kind of that school taught us. It was like, never rely on anyone. You can do it yourselves, girls. This is a man's world, but you have got a place in it. And that was mm. very much instilled in us. And you can see it. I could tell you are loads of fantastic entrepreneurs that I know who all went, were in my class or in my school. But yeah, and I think, yeah, Jess and me and you were all kind of like hanging around together at the same time and yeah. that's definitely what you needed at that time definitely jess has got the kind of more spiritual side that yeah. i'm like a bit like can't get my head around <laughs> sometimes i don't mind admitting to it and um and i'm a bit more like steady eddy sensible mm. but yeah i think it's a good mix to be honest yeah definitely so, so yeah so that project was amazing that was really good and now you're doing retreats yeah so how did that come about uh, so, um, obviously doing my podcast, um, Jess came on the podcast and I'd actually got offered to do it, um, a, pod, a, a retreat in Portugal with another, um, like a gym, uh, yeah. company. And, um, I was ch chatting to Jess about it and saying, I really want to branch out into retreats because I've been doing the meditations and stuff online and I was on, into the well being and all that. And it was on my, my, um, bucket list or projects yeah. to do and uh, Jess was just like oh, I've just had a download you know like she does yeah <laughs> I've just had a download we should do a retreat and I was like okay yeah um so yeah and then sort of started doing the divine feminine retreats um which was so much fun and Sophie came to do the the food on it and um we did four UK retreats and obviously Jess got five kids she just launched a belief code in yeah. and she was like I can't come I can't get away every other month you yeah. know to do a retreat with you um so me and Sophie just took the bull by the horn so to speak and branched off onto our own and um that's we've called it eat pray and self-love and that's what we've been doing since we started off with a couple of day retreats and um then we still did the Portugal one which I was originally going to do yeah. but got the contact and did that in August last year brilliant um which is a great success loved it beautiful venue there yeah. we've got another one there in August this year the 22nd to the 27th so really looking forward to that because we've learned so much in of the last course. 12 months yeah you never know what I mean I've run retreats myself and oh my god like there's some of the things we used to do or I'll be like oh my god but you don't know what you don't know until you do it exactly and you can always refine the process we have to start yeah and your process like when when you go up to your 10 or 15th retreat and you'll look back at your first one and be like oh my god because it'll just be a smooth operation yeah yeah and just incorporating all the things that we've learned yeah. and um having the confidence to implement them as well because that's been a big thing for me like you say imposter syndrome when I actually first started out doing the um the meditations it was actually on Shinny's show right on Facebook and he like, like invited me as a yeah. guest to do to do them and um I really struggled to to do them on my own platform even yeah. though I had all this following yeah. because I felt 
I didn't want to be judged. I didn't want to be having people saying, oh, who's she? Well, a wag, a real I, housewife, which now she thinks she's a meditation yeah, coach, I you think, know. Yeah, of course, and I completely get that. And that's the problem, like, on all those followers, that's why they followed you. They wanted to see maybe an aspirational lifestyle that was, like, about, you know, cars and money and getting pissed in nice dresses mm. and what you're wearing and your handbags and your shoes. But ultimately, there's a lot more to you than that. And, yeah, actually, you probably feel more comfortable doing what you're doing now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You just do... It was actually Jess that came around and she did a belief coding on me to do right. the um, speaking, having the confidence to speak on my own platform. And it was a slow process, but yeah. I'd started to do it. Yeah. Um, and I think just like you said, because of where I'd come from being on the show and, um, oh gosh, we, I mean, the saying about people have this perception of your life because your husband plays football and like you have all this money and um coming in but they no people have no idea where that money is going they have no idea of of what's going on behind closed doors where you're investing that money who relies on you like to provide for them and who's taking advantage of you more to the point because that's exactly what happened with us so yeah. I, so there was such a struggle going on there like for for many years with us but nobody would like be aware of that of so course. like the thing is when somebody has a lot of money like footballers tend to do their list of dependents will become a lot bigger then their lifestyles are bigger then they've got like to keep up with those lifestyles and big houses you need a lot of staff you need a cleaner you need sometimes you know housekeeper you need this that and the other these bills have got to be paid mm. that you know just just your bills just for the house is ridiculous then you've got cars on top then you've got school fees and i'm not saying like we all yeah people listen to this but like, oh yeah whatever do you know what i mean so what footballers are on ridiculous amounts of money but yeah a couple of bad investments here and there and if you're constantly outspending your meat it doesn't matter even if you're on two grand a month and you're living out of your means or you're on you know Ninety thousand pounds. If you living out your means, it's it's going to. There's only mm. one way it's going to go. But unfortunately, people don't see that. And um, and yeah, and a couple of bad investments will wipe it all out. Mm. Which is what I think happened. Uh, and trusting yeah, the wrong people with the market crashing as yeah. well. We had properties, then the market yeah. crashed. We couldn't get rid of anything. Yeah, um, like huge properties. Yeah, um, we were we were just advised very badly for the benefit of the people that were advising. Yeah, and. Um, taken advantage of a lot and um yeah and but where I am now we have to take responsibility for that we allowed that to happen we allowed the control of somebody else to take control of, of our finances too much in the sense that we should have been more aware we should have been more um on top of it but I think what happens with a lot of footballers, especially like they, yeah. they just want to play football, don't they? They yeah, don't think about the other side of it. And yeah. I think there's not enough emphasis on um, on the education of that. And, you know, actually somebody advising them how to manage their money. And um, somebody that can be trusted. Well, this is the thing. The people probably you got advice from were probably people that you just met. You know, mm. or, or friends that you go, well, I'll tell you what, speak to this guy. Mm. You know, exactly. and it's a bit of so that. Is what happened to <laughs> Is it? Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I'm literally guessing here, but is yeah. it that? Yeah. So, um, but ultimately, like I say, um, everything happens for a reason. You know, um, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing now. And I've learned more in the last four years, five years it is since I've left the show, yeah. like five years and experience more than what I have done in my whole life. You know, I know more now, you know, about the mind, about the body, yeah. the power of words, you know, how we can heal ourselves. And I believe, like, I'm still absorbing so, so much information. Um, and it's because I'm passionate about it, because I'm finding who I, who I am, yeah. my authentic self, and I'm still discovering it. Like I say, I'm peeling back the layers continuously. And I think when we're born, and it's actually Gabo Mate, Mate, Gab, Gabo Mate uh, was listening to a, like a little masterclass of his, and, and he describes it really well, how when we're born, we're, we're told constantly um, not to be authentic because when we do something or we, we get cross and we're told not to do something and we get angry and we're then reprimanded for it, we're told off and we, we, we then have the belief that 
to, we can show our emotion, we can't be authentic because if we do, we won't be accepted. And we, 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 we gather all these attachments as we grow older to fit in these boxes of society, mm. you know, to, to keep these attachments, uh, to have us, um, you know, just to keep us being liked and keep us being accepted from our caregivers initially. Yeah. And that's where it starts. And then friendships. And then, you know, like I'm saying, keeping myself small. So each each shift that has occurred has allowed me to step more and more into my authentic self. And um, yeah, I'm just, I'm just loving it. And, you know, just learning about like, there's a whole wide world out there. And yeah, it was nice to live that privileged lifestyle. Yeah. Um, and Although, you know, our relationship wasn't, was far from perfect. It was, yeah. it was very difficult. Yeah. And um, I accepted to be in a, in a relationship that, that I knew wasn't fulfilling me because of my relationship with myself wasn't fulfilled. I didn't feel whole and I was constantly projecting um, to fill it with material objects. And yeah. you're never going to fill anything with anything with a material object when it's it's within that you need to work on. And I've done so much work. And the thing with uh, mine and um, Wes's relationship is that I was constantly wanting him to, I wanted to fix him, I wanted him to change, I wanted, but I wasn't looking at myself. And yeah. I'm the person that needed fixing because of my own, I'm not saying he hasn't got his own stuff to yeah. do, but that's his, he's he his own needs, project. Yeah, of course, yeah. I'm my own project and I've been delving into my past and why I am the way I am, why I'm so frightened of rejection, why I kept yeah. myself small all those all those years, why I'm so frightened of judge, judgment. And it all stems back to my childhood and, you know, being able to delve into your past like that and actually, um, unlock that it's scary it's so scary and that's why a lot of people don't do it and they spend their whole lives being inauthentic even though to the core of them it doesn't feel right and yeah. you know when something feels right because it flows and it's like you're on that river and you're going down it and yeah you're going to come onto a bump now and again but your life is meant to flow and it's not meant to be like a real, you're not meant to be going upstream, struggling all the time. You know, like I say, you're going to come into things that you're going to find difficult, but you're going to be able to work around them. And it's just that connection. And I know when I'm in that flow, that manifesting state and I things that come up and I'm like, wow, like that's crazy. I was just saying last week that I wanted that to yeah. happen and, and it just comes to me. Yeah. But I have to be grounded and I have to be connected. And that's the things that have them tools are so valuable that everyone should be taught at a school age. Yeah. It, we're not taught about emotions, no. are we? We're not taught how to how to navigate. We're not taught how to ground. We're not taught how to heal, you know, just from our energy, yeah. let alone like what to eat, what's right. Yeah. All this stuff is kept from us and it's just blown my mind. Like the the if this was only available for our future generations, what yeah. a difference the, it would make in the world. If you could go back 10 years and talk to Leanne 10 years ago, what would you say to her? Oh gosh, so much, so much. Um, first of all, that she's worthy. She's worthy of having everything that she 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 desires and not to keep herself small because mm. um she's stronger than she thinks but i mean you're saying like going back 10 years but there's so many i just feel like this journey is something that we have already sort of contractually agreed contract is that the right yeah, word yeah um before we come here right um to a certain extent, yeah. I do think things you can go on different paths, but I think, um, would I want to go back 10 years? I don't think I would. I mean, what were you doing 10 years ago? Um, well, was, well, I'm still just starting out on the show, I think. Yeah. Would I say don't go on the show? If I hadn't gone on the show, then I would have potentially still in, been in a friendship that was very toxic because yeah. that made me aware of that friendship. Yeah. So it made me pull away from it. And I wouldn't have learned the stuff I've learned about myself. Yeah, you might not have met the people that you've met. No, no. I, I feel like everything happens mm. to get you to the point of where you are now yeah. for that reason. And now, you know, being able to share what I've learned and yeah. now, you know, doing the retreats and connecting with people and 
writing the course. We've just written a course, the Divine Power course, you know, helping, you know, women, you know, with obviously we've got nutrition side of it that Sophie's doing, then I'm doing the mindset side, side. And even just writing that has been so therapeutic because like you say, imposter syndrome, I'm always playing down yeah. myself and, you know, what I actually, the knowledge I've got and yeah. writing it all out. I'm like, yeah, I know more than I actually yeah, thought yeah, I, that exactly. I do. Um, and even, you know, doing the retreats and um, doing the, when I started doing the meditations, you know, I, I always hated my voice on the show. I hated like listening to myself. And when I started doing the meditations and the amount of people that are saying, your voice is really soothing, it's yeah, beautiful. It is, yeah. So that sort of <laughs> became my my um, gift, my yeah. my instrument, if you will, like a healing instrument. And um, so, yeah, everything, I wouldn't have just, just discovered that if I hadn't been on the show and gone through that transition of not liking it and then doing, you know, there's so much, like you say, that's happened um, and I'm just, yeah, it's just the journey that it is, it's meant to be, I've meant to be here where I am now. And I wouldn't have, I wouldn't be here where I am now if I hadn't have, have been on that journey over the last 10 years. But it's good. Listen, you know, 10 years ago, yeah, you, you know, you could look back and go, well, yeah, I could have, I could say this to myself 10 years ago, but you know, listen, some people never have this light bulb moment ever in their lives. No. In fact, probably a lot of people still on that show who probably still are trying to find happiness in material objects, in a handbag, yeah. you know, and thinking that that is, you know, I've had an argument with my fella, but he's just bought me this, brilliant. So fucking what? Yeah. I tell you what, what I'd really, like I prefer you to hold my hand than buy me another handbag. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You probably have a, you prefer to have a deep and meaningful relationship with someone who's going to show up for you, be there for you, be loyal for you, know what's going on in your life. Yeah. Push you to be the best. Absolutely. Push you to be your um you know your ambition yeah. what is your ambition you know yeah so isn't that what you know and some people so and you've had this kind of like wake-up call and some people never get it yeah and it's scary now being like obviously pulling away from a relationship of 25 years and because of, uh, of like I always listen to like different podcasts of, of, of guys actually yeah. just lately I did that post about the people that are inspiring me at the minute are, are actually men yeah, that are yeah. actually doing the healing because I think it's much more difficult for men to accept that there's healing to be done and to open their heart to it um, but it's so attractive mm. now for me to to have a man that's that's able like emotionally to emotionally available yeah, almost absolutely yeah. um but yeah, it, it's scary because the few and far between, I think, can't they? And that's the thing. And I don't want somebody to fix. I want somebody to, like, I'm making myself whole and I am I need to be the version of myself that I want to see in somebody else. Yes. And that's what I'm becoming now. And I know when the time's right, when I, I'm in that, I know that I'm whole within myself because I've still got healing to do. You know, it's, I've separated, like, well, I've been living apart for 12 months but um it's still a bit of a roller coaster do you know what I mean yeah, it, it's, it is. yeah. yeah. You've, you've grew up with this guy you've yeah. been with him 25 years thought you're going to be together forever now you're navigating a world you know when you, how old are you now 43 that'll do no I'm <laughs> not 43 Alyssa Jesus I wish I was <laughs> oh well <laughs> no, keep how old going are you now 40, 47 really Ooh. Well, let me just tell you, you are cracking. <laughs> Honest to God, you look amazing. Oh. I don't know what everybody says that like to women, don't they? But no, I actually truly, truly mean that. Thank you. So, well, you're navigating a world. So a lot of our customers I are... I a 37-year-old. Just saying, anyone out there <laughs> <laughs> that's healed. Yeah. <laughs> So I um like with our customers. I'll take forty. That's what. <laughs> Thirty-seven to forty. You know? Our customers are all of a similar age, so you know, everywhere from the majority of them anyway are like thirty-five to sixty, mm -hmm. and a lot of them have relationship problems around forties. You know, it is mm. what happens. You know what I mean? Hormones are all over the place. That has a big effect on, you know, going through the menopause has a big effect on relationships without even people knowing about it. It can really, it's like make or break for relationships mm. at that particular time. And, um, you know, I think our listeners will resonate with that. You know, there will be a lot of people who have left marriages at the same time of you. Mm. And it's good to hear that, well, one, 
Yeah, you what, can do it. It's raw. It can be hard. It can be hurtful, but it can be done. Cruel to be kind. Absolutely. And maybe that relationship, maybe it, maybe it did serve you for when you met him. It was brilliant. That was the right, t- right person, right time. But you have grown <laughs> completely. And you've probably grown in different directions a little bit. Yeah. You know, you're you're really wanting to step out and be yourself and, you know, and you want a partner that's going to amplify that and push you. Yeah. Like I said, to be the best person that you can be. Yeah, absolutely. That's exactly what I want. So talk to me about what does a typical day look like on your retreat? A typical day? Yeah. Um, So we'll start with uh, yoga meditation, yoga, and then we'll have some breakfast. And obviously it's all lovely plant-based food that lovely. Sophie um, creates um, beautiful food. And then, so this is at the uh, Arnside Retreat. And then we'll do a workshop. Um, it'll be like a self-love workshop or manifesting workshop where we do like a mood board or something. We do a conscious walk. We do grounding. It's all on the bay so we can go and get our shoes and socks off and do that. Nice. Um, and when we'll do, we'll say lunch and um, we'll, we bring other people in. We have Shan doing um, massage. Um, Shan does a workshop as well, like doing the Kundalini yoga. Yeah. Um, some, um, we have breathwork facilitator. Yeah. We have sound healing. We go on the Ingleton Falls and do a cold water swim up there. So nice. there's, there's lots of um, different things that happen. And then we'll finish with the yin yoga in the evening. And is it just one day? No, that's right. that's just not a typical day. Right, that's, that's like a t- like yeah. a lot of day. Obviously, right. we won't fit all that into one day, yeah, but yeah, it depends on what day it is. You know, it's uh, the weekend ones are on side, so they come on a Friday, leave on a Monday. Right. But obviously, in Portugal, it's obviously over five days, five right. nights. So um, there'll be other stuff that will be incorporated. We've got a PT, P4 Fitness coming to that one. Brilliant. So um, we're going to create um, more of a, of a workbook, yeah. you know, like a Tony Robbins style workbook yeah, yeah. where we'll go, and go through it each day and there'll be different workshops that we'll be completing throughout the day and it'll be more um, structured than what we've done before because we've got the PT. So obviously everything will be optional. So we'll get up, maybe do a walk or a run and then we'll do yoga, then we'll do a PT sh- session and then we'll do... Um, something in the afternoon like a workshop and we have done at the retreat as well which is a really lovely exercise which I love doing is uh, like a creative space so we'll do an app out um with the easels and we'll I've had the ladies doing drawings of themselves naked you know oh, wow. to really embrace their um how does that go down because I would hate to do that well I like, oh, instantly go oh for no, you get a nice picture that of myself. yourself that you like you know what I mean and you copy the picture and right. it's interpretation no, I, just have, I would have not have the confidence to do that I don't think and you don't have to and maybe that's why I need to do it if you surely you must have a picture of yourself that you like yeah, I do, but not naked. You don't have to be naked. It like could be underwear or it can be a bikini on or something right, like that. Okay. Yeah. But just some or even just drawing the part of you that you don't like that needs some love. Yeah. Or that's that's another thing. If I like, had that reaction to it then, I'm thinking well, maybe there is a bit of an yeah, issue there. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so we had like torsos being drawn and right. we had like bottoms and yeah. um yeah, it was it was actually really lovely. It's on the Eat Pre Love the account and we've we did, I did some videos of it and uh, yeah, it was good. It was good. We actually made little boxes on the last Portugal retreat. Of um, so th- we decorated them all, and everyone had to put a card in each each day of some into somebody's box about something nice yeah. um, that had happened, or that they were had a like, nice moment with them, or you know, thanks for sharing something. And obviously, we have conscious conversations and groups, and yeah, so it's um, it's being around like minded people, having open conversations, and ultimately we're all connected on on some level and we've all got similar things that have yeah. either gone on in our past or got, we're going through right now. And so it's just nice to to share and just to know that we're not alone more than exactly. anything else. And that is creating such like, a real like, I don't want to say like girl tribe, but you know, like a real like tribe and also um, 
trust other trusted individuals. So these, so how do these women get in touch with you? They just get like can contact you through the Instagram page. Yeah. So the, the Portugal personally. one is actually a mixed retreat. Right. So um, and it's the first mixed one we've done right. because we've done a men's one at the side. Right. Um, but predominantly like the women's ones do yeah. better because I think there's a lot of organisations now that are doing men only groups yeah. as well and retreats, which is amazing. Yeah. Um, but the um, yeah through Instagram through our website if you come subscriber on our website eatprayandselflove.co.uk um, you'll get money off the, the retreats and events and um, we have like little recipes and yeah. little tips and stuff on there as well so um, but yeah that'll the first. Be, bring a different vibe to it won't it bring your men into it because different men have different energy mm, definitely you know what I mean so that will bring masculine energy yeah absolutely but then maybe the women will change because there's men there. Well, it, hands down, it will change yeah. a million percent because yeah. maybe, I don't know. So we used to have mixed retreats and um, we would always see on nearly every like mixed retreat, there would be a couple of people always got close. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And uh, unless they came as a... That's beautiful to see. That is it? beautiful yeah. to see, yeah. Yeah. So, um, so that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, I think when you go on these retreats, so you do make friends that, yeah. like, and you connect with somebody yeah. um, for life sometimes. Yeah. And we've got group WhatsApps, like, coming out of our ears well, from the I previous bet. retreats. But um, they've they've like still seen each other from yeah. the first retreat you know and obviously Jess has recruited a lot of them from belief coding yeah. as well and um but yeah it's it will be interesting the dynamics and and I, that's why I do think it's good to like women's all women's is is really good and I've I love like supporting women empowering women and stuff but I just think um well with Portugal obviously we've got Jory doing the um doing the PT anyway so he's male and he's yeah, going to be yeah. there we've had male breath work Craig yeah. Seaton's done the yeah. facilitating and and it, it is a, the men's retreat we had the best time you know like we just laughed the whole yeah. time I think women are much more deeper and more emotional and wanting yeah. to but I think they'll find their I think men even like they'll probably might open up to the men and you know absolutely have that. It, it'll be interesting yeah. to see what actually happens there whether it they don't share as much because yeah. there's men around because I know when a group of women get together it can come, become a bit of a man bashing session mm. you know I, I know that used to happen on some of our retreats sometimes and it would be they were there because they hated their husband they hated mm. whatever do you know what I mean there was a lot of that and they just couldn't stand they wanted to be away from loads of men do you know mm. what I mean and then then it, yeah it was very interesting the dynamics yeah but then getting a men's perspective yeah. on it as well so this is what I think is really yes. important you know when you've got men and women together that are like I mean we have got a couple that have booked on it and yeah. we might have another couple that have booked on it as well so that's um that would be really nice for them to do the healing work Correct, together, together as well. And it would really strengthen their relationship yeah. and their bond, yeah. But also if anyone's got any issues that sort of coming away to get away to actually sort of go deeper and find themselves and do the healing, even though the partner isn't, they then might be able to go back and, and see a different perspective from the advice that they might get from, from a man yeah. if they do open up to them. Um, because that masculine feminine energy, we know like how, especially as women, that sort of from the suffragette movement, like women doing it for themselves yeah. and feminism, it's been so twisted and toxic. Men have sort of lost their place in yeah. a sense, haven't they? Yeah. They're like become Definitely. alienated. They don't yeah. know whether to do it for you. Yeah. They don't have to open the door. Yeah. Then they're like being, are they being, um, you know? Yeah, it's either you've been, oh, well, you're saying I can't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But and, I, well, no, I know you can do it. I just wanted to show you that I'm a bit of a gentleman and a bit yeah, chivalrous. Yeah. And I'd like, I thought you'd like that because I'm trying my best here to make a good impression yeah. to you because I like you. Yeah. And this is why, you know, I mean, I was I was listening to a podcast the other day on Diary of a CEO with Chris Wills and he was saying, you know, even though we've got more availability to meet people now in terms of like, we've got so many dating apps, sexlessness is on the rise. Young men don't want to have sex anymore. Women who are fantastic women, can't find life partners, are now not having babies because they're missing that window, fertility window. So there is a disconnect there. Mm. You know, have we gone too far? You know, yeah. yes, the Me Too movement was amazing and that needed to happen. But 
because there were some absolute monsters who really took the piss. But then on the other hand, there's some really nice guys who are probably too scared to do anything now. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that's why it's so important for the men, such as like, obviously the men's organisations that are coming together to allow men to connect on a deeper emotional level to themselves so then they can show up differently in a relationship or attract the right relationship. But also like the people, the likes of like Danny Morell, um, Jake Woodard, who I've mentioned on the on the podcast, Chris Perry, these guys are all, um, you know, promoting masculinity that needs to come back you yeah. know like bring back the chivalry bring back yeah. the romance bring bring back like I don't want to go out for a day and think about I've got to pay half you know and it's not about the money yeah. it's just about you know these guys are saying it, that's a masculine yeah, trait yeah. for a man to like you know just do that and well, this is why Andrew Tate's so popular as well yeah now again you know people have got opinions on him but some a lot of some of what he says is okay. Yeah. A lot of it is horrible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but you can kind of see he's taken to the extreme. But mm. you can kind of see there's a little bit of what he's saying is abs- is true sometimes. Yeah. And also, women do want that. Yeah, of course they do, they do. want that. Like, do not like for a yeah. second. Do you know what the other interesting fact is about um, this? Is something that I've learned through El Sarah. Women who are on the birth control pill pick a different partner to if they weren't on the birth control I, pill. Yeah, I've heard about this. So if you're not on the birth control pill, you are you will pick a more alpha kind of guy, you know what I mean? Because it's a natural balance. It's kind of like a natural dance, your fertility. And when your testosterone gets higher, you automatically kind of mate with somebody that you know you're going to be quite a good match with. It's like subconscious. Yeah. If you are suppressing that by being on the birth control pill and your testosterone doesn't flow as like it should do and that like hormonal cascade that happens yeah. in the month doesn't happen, you will pick a partner because it's almost when you take the pill, you're tricking your body into thinking you're pregnant already. And when you're pregnant, you want a provider so you go for a bit of a beta male, somebody who might not be as masculine, might not be the guy, but probably somebody who's a bit more of a pen pusher and is a nice guy and whatever. And this is why when people come off the pill, maybe to have a baby, they end up hating their That's par- right. They hate their partner because they're like, fuck, it doesn't matter. Didn't. Yeah. Because they, they were never really matched. And you're masking really what you actually should be looking for in a partner by taking the pill. That's just one. And there's been plenty of studies on this. I might link them below on this yeah, on this podcast. But that's another reason as well. Like women actually do. Well, I know I do. I don't know about other women. Maybe if you're on birth control, you don't want it. Maybe you're looking for a guy who's a bit more of a provider. But I'm not. I never have been. No. I've been looking for an alpha. Yeah. I've got one, by the way. Yeah. I, I love my partner so much. And I think we're an equal partnership. I really, really do. He's the first person that I've ever been with that I have thought, like, we're bang on equal here. Yeah. And when, when, when I'm saying about not to pay the pay the half the bill, I'm not saying that I I don't want I don't want to rely on somebody. No, for absolutely. That. I want to make this is where I am now. I'm building myself back up because I want to have it for myself. I want to have make but my masculine own masculine and feminine energy is, is a brilliant yin and yang thing. And yeah. For you to be with a masculine guy, it helps you step into being more feminine as well. And that, that it's a, it's a, it's like that for a reason. Mm. Yeah. And yeah. like, there's nothing wrong with wanting that. And I feel like sometimes women don't say it as much as they should. No, I want to feel safe in a relationship. Yeah. But first I need to feel safe in me. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I need to, this is what I was saying about, I need to feel whole, but I don't want to be second guessing that relationship. I don't, I, I want to be able to communicate fully with, with, my next partner and you know have him you know do all them lovely things um open the door for me and you know like be a gentleman n- and not because I can't do it for myself but because I, I because I want he wants to do it yeah, for you. yeah yeah but I also want to be financially independent in my own right as yes, well that's important and that's really important for me yeah and yeah. then you're an equal yeah in that partnership yeah. because women give up their economic power in our in a, if you give up financial economic power to a partner and, and you are relying on them yeah. you got nothing yeah and you will have to be in a very unpleasant relationship at times when you can't and you can't leave um you that is very important for mm. all women yeah yeah you have to have something for yourself yeah definitely yeah 
And then it, it can you can be in a fantastic relationship. And it is hard. It really is difficult to try and find that person. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, the quest is on. Have you met anybody at the moment? No, I've not. <laughs> um, no, I've not. But I just think that that per- I know you're saying it's hard, but I feel what is it? Um, Rumi says, what you are seeking is seeking you. Yeah. And I fully believe that, you know, that person is is out there and probably going through similar things as what I'm going through. And when we come together, it will be, it'll be at the right time. Yeah. And I, yeah, I've, I've got faith in that, you know. I think you should, yeah. He's got a total order to fill for. <laughs> Honestly, I'm manifesting like this this guy is like from <laughs> yeah no I, I I went away and did the island didn't I with Bear grills because I'd come out of one relationship and I was like what am I doing I don't know what to do that kind of was a bit of therapy for me mm. I learned a lot about myself there and I came back had a bit of a like wild summer where I just got drunk loads and whatever didn't again didn't what I wanted to do with myself didn't know what I was doing really worked on myself decided to quit the booze immediately I was like like that I didn't it wasn't even hard it wasn't even like well cut down no bang done done with it thought I've been doing this forever like what's the point and completely changed my life really started getting stuff going for myself and then you know I met Danny and he didn't drink either and no. I was like, oh, my God, this is perfect yeah. because I don't have to be like that square. Yeah. You know what I mean? That he's like, oh, she doesn't drink. She's, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah, and we met at the right time. Yeah, because you attracted him because you were the person that you and wanted to attract. And I've done that attract. work on myself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you were yeah. matched at that right time. And yeah. That, that's, that's what we've got. It's all right as sitting here saying, I want this person. I've got this whole list of things. But if I'm not showing up for myself Correct. in that way, then how can I expect somebody else to show up and then, yeah. you know what I mean, do that for me? Yeah. Well, that doesn't work like that. And, and also, yeah, I was like exuding confidence at that time because I mm-hmm. thought I'd literally got myself into a zone where I was like, God, whoever gets with me, the lucky guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> and that is hard to get to. Yeah. And I was having a conversation with a friend of mine yesterday and she's just like hating on herself. And I was like, forget looking for a boyfriend. You're never going to attract anyone like this because of the way you're so down on yourself mm-hmm. and you're so like, you know, down in the dumps. Like, and if you do attract somebody, it's not going to be the person who's going to be right for you. No. You've got to Because it'll that. be on her vibe, the vibration that Correct. she's on. You've got yeah. to be, do that work for yourself. It might take a year. It might take two. It might take longer. Yeah. But when you do... Well, you're going to be feeling, you, you'd be going through life happy anyway because yeah. you, you're super happy. And then if you, if somebody wants to come into that because they're like, oh my God, what a great girl. Yeah. You know what I mean? I want to be with her. I want to wake yeah. up with her. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You are. Yeah. You just attract it without even trying because that's the, like you say, when you align yourself with, with yourself and you're not looking for it, when you're searching for something, it's just about surrendering, isn't it? Yeah. Surrender to, you know like going within and then everything else will fall into place. It's working on yourself and building yourself up and that's exactly where I am. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a journey and it's a transition and it is still tough at times. And I do have days where I like, yeah, doubt myself and, you know, and I will t- say something that like the other day, last week I think it was, I was having one of them days um, and I was in sort of like, oh, I screamed at the kids and it wasn't about what they'd done. It was about how I was feeling internally. And these are the, where I'm, I've got such an awareness on, even though I'll still react and I'll still have them outbursts. And, but very quickly I realized like, oh shit, like that wasn't about that. It's like, what's going on Leanne, you know? And I sat with this internal dialogue that was going on inside my head. And it was, it was like my higher self kicking my ass. How can yeah, I describe yeah. it? I, I literally, it was like the loudest voice saying, who the fuck do you think you are? Can I swear on here? Yeah. Uh, who the fuck do you think you are? You're going on like you're healing anybody else. You need to heal your fucking self. Like, you know, the, and it was effing this, effing that in my head. And I had this little tiny voice going, but you are a good person. Like, oh. <laughs> but I've managed to, have you, have you read The Untethered Soul? No. Well, it's about basically be, becoming the observer of your thoughts and, looking at it from a bird's eye perspective because when you're able to do that in that moment nothing will affect you you won't allow them thoughts to take hold of you because you've got the ability to be the observer of them and I was it was almost like I was like in a trance 
but I was just allowing this internal dialogue. But I didn't get sucked into it, but I just knew I had to let it ride its course. I needed to honor where I was, allow it to go on. And I'd seen a pen and paper and this, I would, this advice I would give to anyone writing is so therapeutic yeah. isn't it and I just grabbed the pen and paper something just said to me you need to write it down and I grabbed my pen and paper and I just did is it called cathartic writing yeah. I just literally written scribble 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 everything that was in my head and I got to like two pages at the end I was doing the ponopono like I'm sorry please forgive me thank you I love you at the you think you can do the ponopono and everyone else like you need to do it yourself and like yeah. so I, I they got to the end of these two pages and I just put my pencil pen down and I just looked up I took a deep breath and I just created some sort of shift. I was like, right, I need to clean the kitchen now. And I got up and we went and said sorry to the kids for shouting. And I, you know, that I would have never known how to do that before. This is the knowledge that I've gained. And, yeah. and I, I, instead of staying, so many people have this internal toxic dialogue that they get into and they go into a downward spiral and they find it very difficult to come out of it. Obviously then it goes, leads into depression and, you know, but if you can get that out of it, first of all, become awareness of it because we're not our thoughts. We are separate from them. We are, we can become like the observer of our thoughts. And then whatever's in your head, don't let it stay in there. Get it out in whatever, even if it's just screaming at the top of your voice, whatever, whatever you want to, if you want to say anything or it's just a sound that you need to make, scream, write, you know, pound the pillow, whatever it is, it's it's stagnant energy within you that doesn't need to be there. And that's what we've what was what we've suppressed over all these years yeah. from being the child told we can't do this, we can't do that, you know, be a good girl. And to be a good girl, you have to suppress all this anger and these emotions that are inside of you. And that's what causes dis-ease in the body. Um and you know, just learning that and being able to do that and snap myself out of it. Um, yeah, it was just whether it's through crying or writing or, you know, it's um, been really powerful, really powerful. But yeah, and it is, it can be tough, but like I say, it's just about not, not, not feeling because it's not like I'm, none of us are superhuman, like we are human beings yeah. and we're just, um, I suppose we're going through a, relearning of or we're, we're beginning to understand our ourselves more the more people talk about this stuff how to navigate our emotions and how to deal with um life and what what throws at us and and come out of it as quickly as possible instead of staying there and allowing it to get hold of us well i think that was a beautiful place to finish oh, as yeah. well <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i have thoroughly enjoyed seeing your transition because like I said you you you've absolutely done a 180 but for the better like so much better mm. you're so much more fulfilled these days you know you forget wealth you've got real wealth you know what real wealth is now yeah. it's health it's happiness I speak about all these things all the time yeah. I'm like if you are looking at material stuff to try and find happiness you are never ever going to find it, you know, yeah. and it's, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when, I'll be happy when I have that car, I'll yeah. be happy when I have the house, I'll be happy when. You've got to be happy now. Yeah. You've got to live in the present. And I feel like you really are doing that. Absolutely. Yeah. And then the rest will fall into place. Yeah. Yeah. It's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. And I'm enjoying <laughs> it. Although I know it's, like I said, it's difficult at times, but that's what life's about, isn't it? Yeah. It's just, uh, being on the roller coaster. <laughs> exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. And that's easy. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>